Good morning. Welcome to my hike. I'm Kevin, and this is a relatively flat trail we're hiking on today. It's in Sullivan Canyon in the Santa Monica Mountains, and it's a little dusty today, but not too bad. Um, I think you'll be fine. Yeah, I'm not worried about you. But don't go binge watching all my other hikes because that could lead to some health problems. All right, grab a candy bar. We're going for a hike. This morning, my hiking wingman is someone who really cares about our planet, and he's actually doing things to make a difference in his work. He walks that walk, although today, he'll be hiking that hike. He's an activist, he's an author, and he's a member of a very well-known and well-respected family. That's right. Today, I'm walking that walk with the phenomenal Bobby Kennedy Jr. Bobby, you, uh, you grew up in a well-known family. Uh, I, not so much. What is it like, like, flying out of JFK or seeing um, public buildings or structures named after your father or your uncle? Is that, it's gotta be pretty amazing, huh? Yeah, it's wonderful. I can't imagine driving to the airport and seeing it named Emmett F. Nealon International Airport. That's Quite probably different. not gonna happen. <laughs> My cousin John, I was with him one day, and um, he gave his name, and a kid said, oh, you're named after the airport. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was with him once. John, John failed the bar exam by one point, and it was like international I know it. headlines. I know. And we were on the street one day, when, uh, and this, it was like a wine out an old derelict in the Bowery. And John gave him a buck, and the guy looked up to him and he said, he said, I know who you are. Why don't you home study it? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's going on with your voice? I had a very strong voice till I was 42. Yeah. And then I got a, suddenly it was struck by a disease that I now know is called spasmodic dystonia, but it made my voice tremble like, you know, Kate Hepburn. And particularly if I get on TV, it trembles. I started getting <laughs> letters anyway. from people saying, well, almost all women saying, I saw you on TV and no, you were crying, and it was really good to see a man who could share his feelings. <laughs> they I wasn't crying. crying. <laughs> you know, the amazing amount of work your family has done for civil rights, etc. Do you think you and your family are more recognized by white people or African Americans? Let's say you, walking down the street. Good question. <laughs> Hi. Uh, African Americans. African Americans? Particularly of a certain age, it's like close to 90%. Hey! hey. How are you? Good, how are you? You're so uh, cute. Thank you. Talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> are you a napper? Do you like naps? No. No naps? No. Hey, what's fun? What, where do you get your fun? <laughs> Bob, you're wearing your river keeper. Sure. T-shirt, waterkeeper. Yeah. I used to be riverkeeper. That's when um, that was no, years no, ago. Oh, there's 320 riverkeepers. Oh, so they still have riverkeeper. Waterkeeper is the umbrella group. Okay, but what drew you to it? I mean, of course, we all want clean water. It's it's what we need. One of the things we need in life. But why why not something else like you know the poor or you know? Well, I grew up on water. My father took us to all the Western White Water Rivers. I grew up in the Hyannis Port on the water. And I, you know, I, I felt connected to water. Okay. People say water's good for you, but too much of anything is not good for you. You could die from drinking too much water. Isn't that true? What's the point? <laughs> there is no point. <laughs> There's no point to anything. <laughs> Why does there have to be a point to anything? <laughs> I also, from a very early age, saw uh, pollution as a theft, as a crime that yeah. somebody was stealing from it. In fact, when I was eight years old, I wrote a letter to my uncle, President Kennedy. Here's a... I did not know your this. uncle was President Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is how great Bobby is. He doesn't even have a dog, and he's picking up poop along the way. It looks like I'm running away from home. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be going very far. <laughs> Did you go on a lot of uh, vacations with your father and your siblings? Yeah. 
So, My father was senator of New York. You probably didn't know that either. No, I didn't know that. And he was, oh, we went for the summers to Cape Cod, but my father would take us to, to wilderness trips on almost every other vacation. So we'd go backcountry skiing during the winter, or and usually in the spring we'd do a whitewater trip. How would you guys get there, though? Because there's so many kids in your family, 10 kids, right? Yeah. And would you go, you wouldn't go like in one car, would you? Because <laughs> when we took vacations, there was three of us at the time, then eventually five. We all go in the same car. It was a man house. So you yeah. guys must have had like a caravan. Yeah, uh, I mean, you can fit a lot of kids in a convertible. There's no seatbelts. There's no the limit. That was the day before. That's right. <laughs> and was your father <laughs> driving? Back. Yeah. And on those vacations, you know, you, you end up flying in or... Yeah, Taking that's right. mules out or whatever. So. Yeah. Yeah. You want to hold this? <laughs> we went to the White House to see my cousins all the time. Yeah. But uh, um, to have a, you know, I hadn't actually, maybe the first day after the inauguration when we all went in there, we all piled in there. My father, uh, uh, Slid down the banister, and you know, it was like that scene from On with the Wind, where you know, they walk into the big new mansion, and it's like, We's rich now. <laughs> <laughs> We's rich now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever forget the names of your brothers and cousins? Uh, no, I don't forget their names. But but you, you, you my try kids, to... I forget. <laughs> you forget. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the least funniest one of these. No, no, believe me. This is going to be great. <laughs> this is going to be great. We, uh, what is the most surprising thing about Hyannisport compound that people don't know? You've been there. Yeah. I'd say the most surprising thing to most people is that there's no security there. <laughs> like, and there's constantly people wandering in and like having meals and playing football. Who later, yeah, you know, people say, "Who was that guy?" <laughs> we went out on uh, your mother's on the boat, on Teddy's uh, Teddy's boat, and your mother was steering the boat. Yeah, and she's what eighty? We're saying her eighties. Eighty nine. Yeah, and then yeah, she sails, you know, probably three or four times a week. Yeah, she loves it, and she loves having all you guys around. Yeah. I, rem I remember being in the living room at her house with her. It was just her and me, and I saw a picture of her and your father on the wall. You know the one I'm talking about? They're standing in the uh, convertible going down the street. Oh yeah. And I said, "Where was I this?" I was. They're standing in the convertible, and they have the fearsome foursome with um, the yeah. front line of the Oakland Raiders. Who Walking was, around the car. Uh, my father's bodyguard when he was during the California primary. Yeah. And, and that I, was Rosie Greer. Rosie Greer, yeah. Deacon Jones. O.J. Simpson. Yeah, all those guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I said, you've had a really full life, haven't you? And she looked at me, she goes, I've been very lucky. Yeah. And I thought that was an interesting answer because lucky but also a lot of tragedy you know in the family yeah. I, she says what she says is everybody takes their legs yeah uh, we're all incredibly lucky because and my mother always says this there's kids in Watts and Harlem and you know and Greenpoint who lost their parents or brother or whatever through violence and they don't have the support system we have. We have a huge family that where everybody loves each other. Tremendous amount of resources, education, and a lot of different ways to process tragedy. Everybody's got tragedy in their right. life. Right. Life is a string of, you know, challenges, obstacles. challenges, tragedies, joys, and you got to be grateful for all of it. Ultimately, don't you agree? Oh, totally. Every day I wake up, I go, oh, I get to do this again. Do you think your dad would have won that election? Yeah. I do, too. Nixon had to step over, essentially, the bodies of two Kennedys to get into the White House. 
Yeah. My father was very confident that he could beat him. You know, one of my most poignant memories of my father is when we buried him and we took him on that train ride. We brought him back from Los Angeles. I was with him when he died. How here. old were you at the time? Fourteen. At good the hospital, hospital afterwards, yeah. Oh, and I had flown out as soon as they were shot. Um, but he, we waked him at St. Patrick's. We brought him down on the train. It should have been a two and a half hour ride to Union Station in D.C. It was a seven hour ride. So two million people on the tracks. I remember that. And he, it was the whole cross section of America that I had seen in all these campaigns when I was a little boy. You had black people, you had white people, you had, everybody had military, many of them had military, or uniforms on. There were Boy Scouts and military people. There were hippies with tie-dyed t-shirts. Yeah. There was uh, nuns, uh, blacks, white. Everybody. Everybody saying glory, hallelujah. Yeah. Two million people. So four years later, the demographic data show and most of the whites who lined that train tracks holding flags, holding up their babies, holding signs that said goodbye Bobby or pray for us Bobby. That those people in 1972 voted for, not for George Montgomery, who was mainly aligned with my father politically, but for George Wallace who was antithetical to everything my father believed in. Yeah. Oh, you know, I think it occurred to me then, and it struck me many, many times since, that every nation, like every individual, has a good side and a dark side. And the easiest thing for a politician to do is what Trump's doing today, which is to appeal to our bigotry and our anger and our greed and selfishness and xenophobia and, and you know, use all those sort of dark alchemies of populism that appeal to yeah. the darker side. And I think one of the things my father did with us when we were home, see, you know, he constantly encouraged risk-taking behavior and including going on these white water trips and yeah. climbing cliffs and he wanted us to, not only to kind of imbue us with beef jerky toughness that was part of the American character, but also to you know, persuade us that there was a hero inside each one of us and that, you know, physical courage accompanied moral courage and that you need to sort of opportunities to test both of those. So, I, and I think that he did the same thing on a broader scale with the American public. Yeah. So your parents instilled in you and all your siblings the importance to getting involved and taking risks. What would happen if one of you like just wanted to become like, like a, a mime or a circus juggler? Would that be okay? Yeah, that would have been okay. <laughs> I'd love to ask this question. What was the first concert you ever went to? The Beatles. No, you did Yeah. You saw the Beatles? The Beatles, yeah. Where? Shea Stadium. And you probably know Paul McCartney uh, I, now, right? Yeah, and I knew John. He used to come to our house. All John Lennon did? Yeah. And, and I remember one night when he and Teddy... Now I'm really interested in what you have to say. And, <laughs> and Rosie Greer played a trio all night with, with Teddy on the piano, on playing uh, a guitar at my... And I high school classmate of mine playing the harmonica and then Rosie Greer on this big African drum. And they literally sang probably till four in the morning. How many doggy bags do you have to carry with you? Uh, I normally just carry quite a few. <laughs> when you were a kid, what's the most trouble you got into and you remember your father scolding you? I stuck a potato up at the tailpipe of a car. And what happened? And I blew the carburetor off. And I had to work all summer. What'd your father say? He was really angry. My father, we just wanted to please him. So, oh, if he was disappointed, it was devastating. Did you ever want to be an actor? Oh. Who was, I'm thinking of John, maybe. Yeah, John. 
job. We, did you hang out with John much? Yeah, lots. He seemed like a nice guy. I met him one time with his wife when I was in He was better than a nice guy. He was kind, he was funny. When you were with him, you were laughing all the time. But probably his greatest gift was that he was curious about everything. Yeah, yeah. And my, my aunt Jackie once asked my uncle what he thought his, his best virtue was. And he surprised her with his answer because she thought it would be courage or something like that because he had proven his courage and he said in a book, a best-selling Pulitzer Prize-winning book about courage. But his answer was curiosity. Oh. And uh, John had that too. Yeah. He was interested in everything and he had a, an extraordinary mind and he was thoughtful. Do you think he had a lot of pressure on him to be following his father's footsteps? He didn't seem like he was pressured at all. Did you? Did I? Yeah. You probably could, just because you look so much like your father, you probably could have I don't even know life. what it means. I mean, it doesn't irritate me. It's kind of flattering. Yeah. People always say, hey, isn't it tremendous pressure? It's pretty great being a Kennedy. You know, there's, there's bad stuff. People are looking at you all the time. And, you have a whole right-wing echo chamber that, you know, anytime anybody makes a mistake or an imagine one, that it'll be headlines for weeks. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They and papers you get a love parking that. ticket. And, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, that's a pretty <clears throat> minor cost. Right. So they, they, this huge ocean of goodwill towards our family and, you know, the gratitude that I see every day. It's hard for me to walk a block in New York without somebody coming up to me and saying, yeah, I get that a lot too. Thanks for what your family did for our country. Yeah, I know, yeah. All that, you know what I'm it's sure. like. Yeah. What is your most outstanding feature, you think? On your face, let's say. <laughs> let's say I was a caricaturist. What would I draw? I, I really wouldn't know. Because whenever I've seen caricatures of Kennedys, it's always the teeth. Let me see. Yeah. Kind of Kennedy ish, right? Yeah. What would you say yours was? Um, probably my droopy eyes. Oh, they're very close together. <laughs> I know. It's, you don't have to point that out every time I see you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you jump through the window? I can't jump no, through the window. Work. Here I come. <laughs> whoa! Whoa! Thanks, Bobby. I told you he walks the walk, and he also walks the dog, and he also picks up the poop. He does it all, but he doesn't nap. No, that's what I do. That's where I'm going right now. Thanks for joining my hike. Please subscribe, turn on notifications, and we'll catch you next time. Happy trails and happy snoozing.